kind of like a tandoor type scene. Hey y'all and welcome back to another vlog. Today we are getting more into sin here. Um, just arrived at the Bitshaw Shrine. Um, this is a famous Sufi saint here in Bitshaw and I've been wanting to come here also for three years now. So also my first time back at a Sufi Shrine since 2019. So today is going to be a day all about this very interesting culture of sin. And yeah, so please follow along and get ready because it should be an interesting scene for sure. So I just got this bracelet here and it is something that's commonly seen at Sufi shrines and whatnot. Um, and it's supposed to protect you from evil eyes. So that was a cool experience. I actually haven't seen that at other shrines. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just standing in the outside portion. It's quite a massive area and um, it's absolutely beautiful. I've seen a lot of photos of this and the tile work is amazing. And I'm also noticing that there's actually seems that this is like at least the third Sufi shrine that I have visited where there's like the same type of tree in the courtyard. So I guess I'm gonna have to look and see. see. which is a form of poetry and they're reciting it for a very long amount of time and specifically at shrines. So um, the instruments are absolutely beautiful. Um, hopefully we'll be able to find out a little bit more about what they are. And um, yeah, I just love the vibe of these places. I'm so happy after more than two years to once again be back at this type of Especially in Sin, where this culture is really um, in Punjab, you can find as well, obviously. But in Sin, it's, I've been waiting for years to see um, this culture here in Sin, and it's really amazing. So, um, basically, these people, these devotees, are playing this on um, the instrument, is called Dambura. And um, as you can see, it was a bit of a string type instrument. And these um, these men are playing this literally 24/7 um, in some form. And the only time they actually stop is for um, for prayers, I believe. So wow, could you imagine playing uh, an instrument, even one as beautiful as this, for over 24 hours? Uh, really speaks to uh, you know how how these people must be feeling and. Uh, all of their their deep devotion towards um, Bitsha and it's very just it's amazing to see this. It's absolutely amazing. At this shrine of Shah Abdul Latif Bittai and it is here in Bitsha and um, this man was a fantastic poet and Sufi mystic who lived in the 1600s. Um, he was born in the, in the late 1600s, he lived primarily in the 1700s with most of his um, contributions to Sufi poetry and whatnot were made. Um, he spent the last year of his life here in Bitshaw and this, this is why this beautiful shrine is here um, where he is actually buried. And he is actually the, um, a descendant of another uh, famous Sufi poet as well, so it seems to have quite run in his family. Um, he traveled all over Pakistan, um, he had many spiritual journeys, and as you can see, seven, several hundred years later, people are still coming out in earnest to the shrine to pay their respects to him. And people are not just coming from, you know, Bitshaw or whatnot. We just met a family from Sukkur. People are coming from all over Pakistan to um, visit the shrine and to for those that may never have visited a shrine or a masjid, you have to take your shoes off before doing so. So you could pick them up here, or someone who's working here. And there you could see a sign of Sindh in Sindhi language. A map, sorry, a map of Sindh in the Sindhi language. So the shrine is dedicated to Hazrat Hus. Um, who's Al Haq Makdum, and um, he was a great, uh, <clears throat> a great scholar, and um, 
he is a regarded as a Sufi saint as well. Um, as you can see, the architecture is quite similar to what um, you can see over at the Bittai Shrine. And also, it's quite similar to other, um, even yesterday when I had seen the, um, the tombs in Hyderabad, which were also built in quite a similar time frame. You could also see the similarities in um, tile work and other color choices. <laughs> so there's a lot of like jewelry and bangles and other things for sale here in Hala and I kind of have wanted to get one of these but I've been bringing this for a while so I think I'm going to do that I've been wanting to get one like this since literally Let's see. Yeah, it's not today. We are still here in Hala and now I'm getting to see one of the really um <clears throat> important in industries that they're known for here, which is pottery. Um, so we're gonna be able to learn a little bit about what's going on here. Is kitne der lagega? Katam hoga. Kitna time lagta hai? Ye takriban sari bati ka saman tayar hota hai, baji. <laughs> These are absolutely beautiful pieces of pottery. Like, look at the intricacy here of the um, the rose, and then over here, these are parinde, aka birds. And over here, you could see even more beautiful pieces of pottery. Parinde, parinde, parinde. <laughs> Guys, look at this. This is like a finished product of what it looks like after it's been colored, hardened, dried, etc. Absolutely amazing that it starts out with this like super soft clay. Oh, and look, this is at another like sea. These are also some water in there. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, Hala is known for, you know, they make ajrak here, which is actually this, it's a traditional um, Sindhi cultural um, <coughs> piece of shawl. And also this pottery scene, as you can see behind me, there's a lot of pottery here. And this is just one of the locations where these are being made here in Hala. So, okay, so what did you say this is called? Uh, this is kind of a gulak. Gulak, uh, yes. okay. Do we call it a gulak. Gulak. It's, I'll tell you in Urdu so that you can see it. Okay. In the past, we have a lot of the product that is called gulak. We have a lot of money that we have and we save it. Ah. Points. ah, like piggy bank, yeah. just ah, like a thick so points. Hum isme dalte hai, mm -hmm. jab, uh, in the end of month, mm -hmm. we check that we have to save the money. If we want to buy something, mm -hmm. hum usse, jo paise, humne save it, we save it. Oh, wow. We call it good luck. Good luck. And it is sin thing or sub Pakistan? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think everyone has. Has a memory, uh, has a child mm -hmm. memory um, related to this gulag because mm -hmm. uh, as a child everybody used this gulag wow. to save their money uh, and parents giving us uh, the coins, mm -hmm. coins, pesos. We call it sikka. Sikka. Yes. Coins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we to save coins in this gulag. Oh, okay. Just to save the money, and if we want to buy something in the end of the month, we just you know open this up and just uh, ah. and then we just check out how much money we have saved, and then we just go and buy something. There is kind of like a tandoor type scene. This guy here is um, it. 
Bhakti. Bhakti. And um and uh to kya ho raha hai? Isme mal pak raha hai. Mal pak raha hai. Saman pak raha hai. Ah. Hai na gale wagera. Khale 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 udar hai. Ha, udar andar khale hai. Ah, okay. Okay. Over das. As you can see, um, this fire behind me, this is where the pieces go to bake before and then all of the painting and um, design work happens after that. I've, <laughs> I keep saying this, but I'm just so amazed. There's so many cool things here and that are just first times for me. <laughs> So and then they they're using these paints in here to actually color the designs after they're baked and you know they're at that stage and ready to go. Um, and then here you could see some more roses that are ready for the stage of the production. Kashi gari. Kashi gari. Kashi gari. Kashi gari. Ah. So, क्या step ऐसा है? पहली step? पहला. ठीक है. So, this is the first step in the production process. Uh, oh, wow. Uh, bus. I just love the Parinde, especially they're so cute. <laughs> Here, um, this this these pieces are actually in the painting process step of the production so um here you can see this man he's working on the painting part of the process and um so there's clearly many steps the one that we just saw before is like that's the first step and once the um the items are shaped then they'll essentially go into baking and then once they're baked and you know smooth and all that then they get into the painting scenes and here you could see that now the actual colors are being added um yellows red pink and blue is obviously the bottom color oh. i'm always so impressed by people that can paint because i really cannot paint i can't even paint my nails <laughs> And here you could see kind of like some water fountains also with the Farinde on them as well. So there's multiple types of projects here. Bhoot shukriya, thank you. And actually guys, if you want to see the real first step of the procedure, it is this right here. This is what makes the magic happen. <laughs> 